What's going on everybody? I'm back and I'm going to make today's video about five things that I love about my Lexus ISF. Hopefully you caught the five things that I hate about my Lexus ISF video that I've released previous to this, but if not, I'm going to link it down below and, um, and at the end of this video. So hope you, hopefully you, you learned something new today and um, see what I enjoy about my Lexus ISF. Here we go. Okay, so the first thing that I love about my Lexus ISF is kind of a, a combination of three different things. The engine, the transmission, and the sound that is produced by that engine. Uh, the engine, 5 liter V8, naturally aspirated. Um, Lex, uh, you know, kudos to Lexus for keeping the naturally aspirated V8 alive. I know all of the other automakers are going to smaller turbocharged or supercharged um, motors and... Um, you know, there's nothing like a naturally aspirated V8. The sound, the pull, the reliability of it. Um, while I do like the numbers that those um, that the, the supercharged and turbo turbocharged motors are producing, that's pretty cool because you can, you know, just with a simple tune, you're adding loads of torque and horsepower. Um, you know, th there are the reliability issues. There are the the extra moving parts. There's the the extra heat that's produced by those systems. So you know, you have to worry about those a little bit. Um, I like the 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 motor on this car because um, it's it's just a stout motor. There's there's guys that have been tracking this car five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five, thirty track days, and you know nothing has really broken on this uh, on this motor. There are examples of ISFs with three hundred fifty thousand miles on them, and you know not much really breaks on these cars. So I do love this motor, and I do love that Lexus is keeping this. Uh, you know. The naturally aspirated motors alive um the transmission eight speed transmission that came out the first one in 2008 um some people you know complain that oh it's always hunting for gears i don't think so um even if you have this car in drive and in sport mode it's a pretty smart transmission it knows when it, uh, it needs to hold gears it's depending on how you're driving if you're driving aggressively and you know revving you know in the, the higher rpm range it knows that you're driving aggressively and it'll hold those higher gears when you're going through um a, a turn or a corner and you know you always have the manual mode where you can go and you know control it yourself and what i really like about this transmission is it will let you hold a gear you can hold second third whatever gear you want at the top and just bang off the red limiter and it's not going to force you to go up to the next gear um and you know it's like some transmissions do it shifts really quick. It's not, I'm not going to say it's the fastest because I know there's a, the PDKs, some of the dual clutch transmissions, but it's a good transmission for everyday use, for track use. And there are examples of ISFs with, uh, you know, there, well, there's a lot of examples of full bolt on ISFs, no transmission issues. Now there are the supercharged ISFs with 650 wheel horsepower and I, I think they're starting to push the limit of this transmission, but that tells you a lot when this, you know, this transmission was built for a 350, 360 wheel horsepower car. If it's holding nearly double that power, um, you know, that, that goes to show me that this transmission is, um, pretty, pretty, uh, stout. And so it was, it was built well. And, uh, the, the third thing that I mentioned was the exhaust note, mind you, one of the things that I said that I hate about my ISF is the exhaust note stock form. When this car is uh, has at least a catback exhaust, it sounds great. If you put headers on, it's going to sound even more amazing. Um, the the the, the the sound that it makes, it's it's kind of unique. It's kind of, because uh, Yamaha helped uh, Lexus produce uh, this motor and, and, and tuning. So it's, uh, it's, it's got its own unique sound to it. And more so, you don't think that this, this sound is going to come from a Lexus. You know, you, you, you see a, a, an AMG or maybe a M series or even like, you know, a, a Mustang or Challenger. You know the, what, what those motors are going to sound like. But when you fire this up, um, you know, to somebody unsuspecting they're gonna wonder what, what why is that sound coming from that lexus and um I, you know that that really surprises people and i really like that it does that and so the sound that this car produces is also um in the combination of the first like i guess three things what one a one b and one c of the uh of the things that are things that i love about my lexus isf and now the second thing that I love about my Lexus ISF is the cost of ownership. I find this car to be relatively cheap to own. Now cheap is a relative term to different people, but in in 
the aspect of cars at, at this performance caliber, this car I think is very cheap to own. Other than, you know, gas, brakes, tires, and oil, there hasn't really been anything that I have had to spend any money on to, to fix. Um, you know, it's just every the 5,000K services, which other than the 60K one, it's mostly oil changes. If you if you look in the manual and you look at the 70, 75K, 80K, most of the um, most of those 5K intervals, it's pretty much just an oil change. I mean, it's you know checking to make sure everything else is okay, but as far as any fluid change um, that you 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 have to do, that um, it's it's just oil. Um, the 60K is an expensive one. Uh, luckily for me, I had a I bought this car as a CPO, so it was covered under that service. So that was nice. Um, but for anybody that you know, if if you if you just want to buy normal parts, I mean, you can get brake rotors for if you want to get the OEM ones, you can get them on eBay for a hundred bucks a piece or so. Um, depending on what pads you want to go with, you could find pads. I don't know, Stop Tech ones for I think a hundred bucks or so for the. For me, the fronts, 100 bucks for the rear. It's pretty cheap. Now, if you want to go up to better ones, track level ones, you are going to pay more money because it's, you just have to pay to play to be at the track. Um, oil, you know, depending on if you do it yourself or if you take it to the dealership, it does take what nine and a 9.5 quarts or something like that. So you're gonna get two of those jugs if you do it yourself. That's I don't know, maybe 50 bucks, 60 bucks at uh, if you go to Walmart and pick up those oil filters. Um, you know. 10 bucks maybe um it's it's pretty cheap and then tires there's a range of tires you get the tires i get are 255 in the uh, fronts 285s in the rear the firehawk uh, uh, firestone firehawk indy 500s which i really like um all my videos that you've seen those are the tires that i've been rocking at the track at the drag strip daily driving i think they do pretty good for what they cost 680 dollars for all four of them all the way around tire rack.com um so I, I personally think that for the, the caliber of performance that this car produces, very good um, on the wallet. Um, you know, it's especially if you want to go the, the cheaper, the cheaper parts, it, it's not, it's really not too bad. So um, if you can, you know, luckily for me, nothing has broken. I know some people have the, uh, the water pump issues, the valley plate leaks, but that, I, you know, not to say that the 12s, 13s and 14s are immune to it, but I feel that, um, it's it's happening more to the 08s and 09s so that's something to look out for but um you know from what i what, what i read on club lexus you know talking to other people they all have the same uh same experience as me it's really not that expensive to own this car as far as uh, parts and maintenance go like i said oil tires brakes uh and gas so um, I mean, if there are other expenses, uh, luckily I haven't had to deal with any of them so far. So I'll, uh, keep hoping that that continues. And that's the second thing that I love about my Lexus ISF. And now the third thing that I love about my Lexus ISF, the, um, exclusivity of it, it was the start of the F line from Lexus and the looks that you get from people on it. Like I said, there was only 5,118 of these produced in the U.S. during a seven-year run, um, and then I think 12,000 and some change all around the world. That's a lot less than the M3s, the C63s, the RS4s, you know, those, uh, those you know, rivals to this car. So you don't see very many ISFs, um, and which leads me to the next point. When people see this car, they kind of wonder like, hey, that's, uh, why does it sound that way? You know, I've been at gas stations before and people, you know, I'll start my car up and people like, kind of like, look, you know, why does that car sound that way? I've been at the drag strip. I'm going back down the line next to the, the crowd and people are wondering, how does that Lexus sound like that? What does he have in that car? Um, it's kind of cool because you're a sleeper. You know, a lot of people don't know what this car is. I've, I've had more people than I care to count asked me or asked me what kind of F sport this car was. And, um, I don't know, that kind of irks me because, um, this is not an F sport, but it, but it's also a teaching moment where you can let them know what the F brand is. So 
I try and uh, take that approach, use it as a teaching moment for them and let them know. And they're, you know, they're impressed that Lexus can, you know, has built a car like this because everybody knows, you know, Lexus is the grandpa car that, uh, you know, you're, you, you know, that you're just going to kind of cruise around easy in. But with this F line, this was the first to the, this was the start to the F line for Lexus back in 2008. They built this car first. And then in 2012, the LFA came out and then 15 and 16, the, uh, RCF and GSF came out. So um, it's kind of cool to be the, you know, to own the first car in a line of performance vehicles. Um, hopefully that translates to, uh, you know, maybe maybe like the Supra of, uh, of uh, the, the 90s. It'll get, uh, you know, the pump up the numbers and um, and it'll get more and more exclusive and maybe more people will want it as, as more car companies are going to the uh, forced induction. People will want that old V8, um, you know, sound and feel. So, I mean, maybe that's just wishful thinking on me, but those that that all around encompasses the third thing that I love about my Lexus ISF. And now the fourth thing that I love about my Lexus ISF is the all aroundness of this vehicle. Um, this is a good daily car. It's a good track car and it's a luxury car all in one. Um, you know, I use this as a daily vehicle. You know, it's nice to sit in, um, you know, whether you're in traffic, whether you're just driving around the streets, whether you're on just the freeway cruising, um, it's a nice place to be in. You know, you have the, uh, I guess, luxury amenities. You have the, the heated seats, you have the Bluetooth, um, you have the, um, the gauges that look very nice. There's little appointments that Lexus did to make this interior a very nice place to be. Um, what I really like are the uh, little, let's see here. The F logos, you know, the bottom of the steering wheel that they added. Um, I think that's a really good looking gauge cluster. Um, I, I like it because it's more focused on the RPMs. That's where, that's what I want to be looking at. Um, you know, it has a digital uh, speedometer. That, that was an addition in 2011 that they added, which was really good. Um, there's little seat, uh, there's little Fs on the seat here. I mean, just the, it's it's the little details that I think uh, count on this car. You know, on the back, the left details and um, blue stitching. I mean, I think they did a really good job in making this car a pleasant place to be. Um, now, as far as tracking goes, this car does a really good draw a job at the um, at the track. You know, as you've seen on all my videos. I'm out there racing at the drag strip um, all the time, a couple hundred passes, probably over 400 passes, and um, it's, it, you know, I'm comfortable in this vehicle. I, you know, I see some of those cars out there, these guys are in full suits, sweating their butts off. They have, uh, you know, full fire jackets and everything, no AC, everything stripped out. Granted, they, their car is a little bit faster, but I mean, they're taking those cars on a trailer. This is a good all around car. I drive this to the track in luxury got the seat heater on got uh you know ac heat going bluetooth all that and then i go run it all night and i drive home um this car at the road courses does pretty good i was in the advanced uh, intermediate group um this past uh, last weekend at my auto club speedway um race ra um road road course and i was on on track battling G, uh, Cayman GT4s, Z06 Corvettes, you know, Camaro ZL1s, um, STIs, other ISF, Ford GT350s, other cars. And if I wasn't, you know, uh, pulling away from them or, you know, switching spots, we were all pretty close battling that whole time. Granted, um, driver, uh, driver skill has a lot to play into that, but for, for this car to be with those, you know, big track dogs means something. Um, it means that this car is capable. Now with the same driver with those cars of the top capabilities, they definitely would would beat this car on the track. But um, you know, to be able to hang and battle with those cars really shows that um, that Lexus did a good job with making this a track ready um, vehicle. And so that and all of its case or all around is the fourth reason why I love my Lexus ISF. And now the fifth thing that I love about my Lexus ISF is the consistency of this vehicle. Um, consistency and acceleration. 
in breaking in performance um i know how this car will accelerate and it, and it accelerates the same exact way every time a lot of that has to do with it being a uh naturally aspirated v8 with a linear pull along with this transmission that you know keeps uh shifts you know c consistent as well as the brakes the brakes are always consistent um i know when they um you know i know how this car will break every single time I haven't had any issues with the brakes yet, and so I'm glad about that. Now, along with um, handling, this is very uh, progressive and controllable handling. The stability and traction control, if you uh, you know keep that on, it, it definitely lets you kick out that back end. It lets, you, but it's not too intrusive. Um, it'll probably save you more than it, uh, it it hinders you. You can turn that off, and you know if you are the next um, Lewis Hamilton, go for it and uh, kick that back end out. Um, this car will let you do that. So it's, it's very consistent in everything that it does. You know, there's, you're not going to show up to a track day or drag strip or just driving on the street and it's going to do something weird or crazy on you that, you know, um, I know that turbo cars, that's, they're always uh, known for that. When that turbo boost hits, you know, it'll just send you, uh, you know, back in your seat. You might lose control of your steering wheel. Uh, I've, especially if you have a front wheel drive, turbo car i previously owned a mazda speed 3 and that thing once that once that boost hit you were wrestling that steering wheel all the time it was fun but you know if it was if somebody new that doesn't know the car it could be uh, you know quite uh you know scary at times because you don't know which way that wheel will pull you so this car is um is, is very good in the consistency factor and that is you know probably the um you know the the fifth reason why i really love this car because you know exactly what you're getting with it every single time that you get in uh there are no huge surprises so it's uh it's very easy to drive this hard because you know what's going to happen when you do certain things and it definitely lets you know when you are pushing the limits on it whether it be the brakes and uh, the or the handling um it will you know, it'll give you good feedback so you know what is happening and what you need to do to correct it. So that about wraps up the five things that I love about my Lexus ISF. I hope you were able to learn something new that you didn't learn um, or that you didn't know before. So um, if you do have any more questions about it, please um, leave it in the comments section and I'll try and get to you. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and I will try and get as much content out to uh, you folks as I, uh, as I make it or as I race. So thanks again for listening and watching and uh, letting me ramble on for, these, uh, for this time and uh, we'll see you soon.